Now we're going to solve inequalities, which behave much like equations, but inequalities have a less than, a greater than, a less than or equal to, or a greater than or equal to symbol in them. But they use the addition property and the multiplication property much the same except for one small glitch. And I'm going to share that with you at the end of the, the few examples that I'm going to do. But you can add things to both sides of an inequality. You can subtract things from both sides of an inequality, divide, you know, multiply. And we'll, we'll get to that glitch in a minute. But I want to both solve these by isolating the variable x, by getting rid of this plus 5. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides of this inequality. And 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. And I find out that the value, the solutions that are good for this um, equation for x are any values that are greater than a negative 3. So not just one number, but on a number line, if I have the number 0 here, here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. It's any value that is greater than this. So I put a circle right here at a negative 3, and I draw an arrowhead off to the right saying that all real numbers that are bigger than a negative 3 work in this solution. Anything, like I could go way out here to a 5, and I could put this in for x, and it would be a statement that is true because 5 plus 5 is 10, and 10 is indeed greater than 2. So all of these values work. Because this is a greater than symbol and not a greater than or equal to symbol, then x is just greater than 3, not equal to 3. So we have an open circle on the graph on this number line. Let's go ahead and do another. So let's take x plus 8 is less than or equal to a negative 11. Let's solve for x by getting rid of the positive 8. So I will subtract 8 from both sides of this inequality. And I'll have x is less than or equal to. I'm adding those two negative numbers. The sum of their absolute values is 19. I put that common sign with them. When I want to graph something like this on a number line, I will just stick a negative 19 on the, on the line. I don't have to include the origin 0. And I want my values for x to be great, less, I'm sorry, less than or equal to. So I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to color it in this time because x is equal to a negative 19 as well as any values that are less than that. So out to a negative infinity. If your variable x is on the left side of your inequality statement, then this symbol points in the direction of your arrowhead in your graph. It's not always the case that x is on the left, so you have to be careful of that. So that's only true when x is on the left. You can always make x be on the left, but sometimes the way the problem is given to you, it occurs on the right. So be careful. So let's go ahead and solve another. So 2x plus 4 is greater than x plus 7, and I want to solve for the variable x, so I'm going to use the addition principle to, to get x along. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So 2x minus 1x is 1x plus this 4, and now I want to get x alone, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, and I have x is greater than 3. On a number line, I would just stick a 3 on here with an open circle and point my arrowhead or my solution set to the right of 3 because x is greater than 3. And I'm all set. Again, not just a single solution, but a set of numbers where x is greater than 3. Let's go ahead and look at another because we've only been using the addition principle. So let's now take 3x is um, less than or equal to a negative 6. And let's divide both sides by 3 to get x alone. So I'll divide by 3, and this will become a 1x. And I discover that x is less than or equal to a negative 2. So again, on my number line, I'll just stick a negative 2 on here. I'll color in the circle, and x has values that are less than or equal to that negative 2. And I'm all done. So dividing both sides of an inequality by this positive 3 gives me the solution of x is less than or equal to 2. I'm going to go ahead and put a fraction in front of the variable. So nothing too unusual there. Um, 2 thirds x is greater than 6. And so to get x alone, I multiply by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. 
Um, if you need to keep that six up high and stick a one underneath it so that you properly multiply that together, I prefer to just go ahead and say two goes into here once and into here three times, and three times three is nine on the right side. And I found that x is greater than nine because right here three halves times two thirds is equal to one x. X is greater than nine looks like this in a graphical form on the number line. Now, let's go ahead and put a negative coefficient in front of the variable x. So, I have a negative 7x is less than a negative 21. So, I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 7. So, I'll divide, again, both sides by a negative 7. And over here, I have a positive 3. I've got to grab my red pen for a minute. If this is going to be a true statement, then I have to take this inequality symbol when I divide by a negative number and I have to flip it. The solution set for this is values for x that are greater than 3. Matter of fact, I'm going to pick one and just check it. So, a value that is greater than 3, I'm just going to take a 5 again because that number 5 is pretty nice. Um, and I'm going to, it's part of the solution set, I'm going to put it in the original equation. Negative 7 times x is less than a negative 21. So I ask you, is a negative 7 times 5 less than a negative 21? Or is a negative 35 less than a negative 21? And it is, because a negative 35, let's put 0 on the number line, a negative 35 would be way over here when, let's say, a negative 21 is right here. And so it is further to the left of the 21, so it is smaller. Negative 35 is smaller than the negative 21. So I picked this number 5 out of the blue because it was part of the solution set just to check it. Now I'll explain to you why it's true um, in terms of another way, other than the fact that I checked the solution and it did work. Let's do one more problem first. So let's see, that problem is... A negative 7y plus 13 is less than or equal to 48. So I want to solve for y, so I have to get this term with y alone. So I'm going to subtract 13 from both sides of the inequality. So adding and subtracting, never an issue. 48 minus 13 is equal to 35. But the minute I divide by a negative number, the minute I divide by this negative 7, then this right here has to be flipped. And my solution set for y is values that are greater than or equal to a negative 5. And I would draw a picture of that right here. Here's a negative 5 equal to and greater than a negative 5 are the solutions. Again, I could pick some values. You know, like one of the values that's greater than a negative 5 is the number 0. So let's go in here and put a 0 in for y. And you tell me if a negative 7 times 0 plus 13 is less than or equal to 48. So here's a check. All right, I just picked a number in the solution set. This is 0. So I want to know if 13 is less than or equal to 48. And it is less than. So I've checked it to see that it works. Finally, here's another reason to explain why all of this is true. If I have a statement, 3 is less than 5, and I multiply both sides of that statement by a positive number, I would have 6 is less than 10. That's a true statement. 6 is less than 10. If I chose to multiply both sides of that statement by a negative number, so let's multiply by a negative 2, then I would have a negative 6 is less than a negative 10. On a number line, a negative 6 is right here, when a negative 10 is right there. And a negative 6 is not less than. A negative 6 is greater than a negative 10. And so there's another illustration as to why, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip that inequality symbol.